just said today. Oh. Right, should we go to... Yes! Are you ready for <laughs> yes. the big finale? Yes, and that was really good, Lou. <laughs> very good. Not as good as Tom Kerridge at all. No, Tom uh, Kerridge is here. There he is. He's Hello, Tom. Uh, he's got his new book. Hey, ladies. Hello. How We've are we? Nice to see you. Looking forward to this Hello. How are we? Are we all right? We yeah. good? Lovely accent. Lovely that we've Proper got a little accent. bit of style. Proper accent. This is there a book. Go. Here. It this is, is what we're talking book. about. Yes. Pub Kitchen. I mean, there are so many sort of classics in here, things that you'd want to go out and order and just go, yes, I'll have ten of those. But this is how to bring it into your into your home. Exactly, into your home. And it's kind of a celebration of the first cookbook came out 10 years ago, Can't right? It makes me feel very old. And that was called Proper Pub Food. And I've done a load of different books since then. But it was a chance to revisit it and look at how pub food has changed yes. over the last 10 years. And it's moved from just like you mentioned there, those classics that we were talking about. And you would say things like, I don't know, we would talk bone marrow on toast was a big yeah. thing 10 years ago, maybe a bit more than that. And then you start going, actually, now pubs and the way that they've developed and grown and moved forward over the last 10 years has been amazing. It's been super exciting. It's been brilliant to see where we where we embrace world cuisine. Yeah, like, lots of different Nowhere things. else would you go and have, you could have like a Korean style grilled mackerel followed by pork romanesco sauce. So true. And then a sticky toffee pudding and think it's perfectly normal. Like global foods. Have, that's how British food has moved forward into these amazing spaces and yeah. pubs. And there's a load of recipes in there that you can do at home. You've got over 100. 100. There is, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Brilliant. Is, yeah. 25 of them are puddings, mate. It's the biggest mm -hmm. pudding thing that I've done, actually. Right. And they're lovely and they're simple, they're easy, they're quick. There's some that are a bit more weekendy, but most of them are all about simple, beautiful flavours that represent great British food, oh even though it's kind of using European influences or world cuisine. This one, pork romesco sauce, chicken for you, mate. Mm. This is the beautiful thing about romesco sauce. You can, it's so accessible. It goes with pork, goes with chicken, goes with fish. Here, pork chops, yeah. taking the rind off it, the, you were talking earlier about overcooking it to yeah. get crackling really good but the pork not overcooked actually the two things is quite a technical thing to get right uh -huh. just remove it don't have the crackling just treat Keep it, it as like it's a chicken breast okay okay pan is on the heat gonna get it nice and hot and in that i've put the porks on a marinade and they've been marinated very very quickly in smoked paprika a bit of salt some um olive oil and some thyme leaves some fresh thyme mm. leaves on it and i'm just gonna fry them okay they're gonna go into the pan and cook them. Right? And is it gentle heat? What you? I would say we're going to cook it at around about maybe eight out of ten. So quite high. If I can get it quite high, quite high. Yeah. I might put it on a bigger, faster one. And then what you want to do is sear it up nice and quickly, almost like you're cooking a steak, all right? Yeah. But you want to cook it just a little bit more. You cook it quite high so it sears it and cooks it. Then you want to rest it, maybe a little bit of resting, so that residual heat. Otherwise, if you're cooking it super high, what happens is it does dry out. And those yeah. are the bits there when you start going, pork chops are a bit chewy, yeah. they're a bit crunchy, they're not quite right. It's a, it's, it doesn't feel doesn't great. Mm. Now, to go with it, the romesco sauce. Now, romesco sauce mm. is one of those beautiful Spanish dishes Lovely. that you have in tapas bars, pincha mm. bars. This sort of thing that you use it as a dipping sauce. It goes with bread, but it goes with so many different things. And it's very simple. Red pepper is cut in half, taking the seeds out. A yeah. tomato cut in half, seeds in now put them on a tray skin side up yeah your grill on the on, in the oven okay and it goes into the oven with the grill section on it fairly high but quite low down so you want to kind of cook them and are you soften trying to char, char it you can, are going to get them oh, nice and blackened on the top but as you've been doing it because it wasn't so high and they didn't burn we've gotten to the point where they just kind of cook as well so that flavor comes through starts to stew them and at this point you could just remove the skins are just leave them to cool a bit and the skins will come off, but you haven't got to worry about them too much, okay? So that's you it, you're done with the skins, you don't eat those? You don't, you, no, but, it, well, you can. It does work with the skins on, but actually, sometimes they just leave little bits. So I want to make it a bit smoother. Okay. But if some of it stays on, don't worry about it, okay? And you can see there mm. as well, look, there's bits of char marking, and that's all flavour, that kind of like barbecue, coley kind of flavour that you want. And you peel the skins off of the peppers and the tomatoes, and then we'll stick them into a blender, okay? That's really Oh, my long really it roughly tasty. take to um, char them like that in the a, oven? A, a, honestly, about five minutes. Oh, Not really too long. If it's it. preheated, it's absolutely fine. If it's preheated, it'll be no problem at all. And then goes in, get that lovely kind of char, the skin separates into a blender. Now, in that blender, I'm gonna put because it's Spanish, we're going to put some sherry vinegar, okay? Sherry vinegar, amazing. You want that sense of acidity. Yeah. That will go in. 
about one and one and a half tablespoons. That's about right. <laughs> and then also <laughs> into that, we're going to put some more smoked paprika. Now, the smoked paprika, that smokiness is amazing, but that paprika flavour is one that you kind of massively associate with Spanish cookery, and it's beautiful. Then into that, olive oil, mm -hmm. around about four tablespoons. I might do just a little look, little a bit, bit more. more. And if you wanted to, you could also, at this point, put in a bit of garlic, you could put in some lemon juice, you can put in lots of different... So it's kinds. quite versatile, you can change it. Exactly, it's It tastes quite really good. like zingy. Mm. Do you know yeah. what I mean? It's got that real fresh sort of zing. And that's what comes from the vinegar. Mm. Now, the thing that binds it all together and holds it all together are these. Roasted almonds, OK? Toasted mm. almonds. You want them where they've gone that really nice dark colour. You can actually buy them in shops now, ready done like this. Mm. You can buy the smoked almonds, they would work really nicely as well. Oh, yeah. Stick them in. Then we're going to put this mm. and we're going to blend it so it'll be a little bit noisy. That's all right. Bear with us. I know, we, we sit back at this point. And you blend it to the smooth skewer. Smooth, smooth. It's almost like a pesto with almost the Almost like it. a pesto. It's exactly. It's of... very, very similar to that kind of pesto flavourings. Mm -hmm. And that's what you get. And you get that lovely kind of mix that we find a bowl to pour it into. In fact, there's a bowl that I've already poured one into. So clever. So exactly, you, you blend it, and this is the sort of thing, and it'll sit in the fridge, and it'll sit really nicely. You can keep it for up three, four, five days. It's no problem at all. Now, the pork steaks, you can see, cooked one side, flipped them over, going to cook them the other. If you want to, you can stick them into the oven and just keep roasting them and cooking them. And then when it comes to serving, get yourself your plate. You get your sauce. Now, I've served this with yours. You've got some green beans, you've got some roasted potatoes. The potatoes are so good as now, well. Now, the roasted potatoes, what's happened to them is they've been stuck in the oven, roasted with some olive oil, and they've also had a little bit of the thyme on them. And the olive oil and the thyme, and the way that you just roast them, roast them with the skins is absolutely fantastic. Mm -hmm. And these pork, roasted, and as they finish cooking, you'll see with these, I've just left them to rest. You take them off the heat, squeeze in some lemon juice, what happens with the lemon juice is it just kind of steams it and helps cook it. And that's what, another thing that will help it keep nice and moist. Slice the pork chops. Kind of serve them on top of the romesco sauce. I've done it with some green beans. And the green beans as well, these haven't been blanched. I haven't put them through a boiling water. What I've done is I've just <laughs> gently cooked them, so steamed them in olive oil, roasted them. You can do them in a frying pan if you wanted to. The roast potatoes, Lovely. crispy, crunchy, and the green beans on the side. Nice, simple, really easy, to, quick to put together, perfect for a tea time on whatever day today well done is. You. Tom, Karis, thank you very much. That is like the perfect meal for me. That is everything and more. Thank you. Thank what, you a joy. what a joy. Now, uh, for details of all our recipes from our uh, This Morning Chefs, they'll all be available on our free This Morning app. Right, the Loose Women is on.